Hey guys, in this video, I wanna share with you the foolproof way to clean headliners to basically 100%. That took me years to figure out every single time with one chemical and one tool. So without wasting any time, the tools and the chemicals in front of me are number one, the Tornador Max. Number two, a chemical from a company called Release It called NCAP Spot Clean. And all three of these things are particularly important for headliners. So let's jump into this car, look at the headliner and talk about why. Now the first thing we wanna clean here is this passenger side visor here because this is where people actually grab with their hands like this and put it down, right? So this is where you get a lot of discoloration, obviously, because people are touching it all the time. The other place you get discoloration here is obviously on the inside of the visor, as well as kind of right above it, which is basically where people have kind of taken the oils from their fingers. You put the visor up, and then it touches the headliner right there. So this can be a complicated place to clean because it generally builds up a lot of dirt, and when you build up a lot of dirt on this particular type of material, detailers kind of freak out because it's difficult to address. Now, as I get started cleaning this particular visor, I want to explain a couple things about cleaning headliner that's really, really important. Number one, the reason why I'm using this really small spray bottle is because with headliner, light repeated applications is always going to be best. And so this tiny little spray bottle does not shoot out a lot of mist at any given time. And when I have a larger spray bottle, like a 32 ounce standard size, I kind of have to try to control the spray trigger. And I just don't get as fine of a mist as I do with something like this. So when I spray this on the visor, just like this on the front part first, I'm going to spray across the entire front portion. I'm going to let that sit and start to break it down. What's inside of here is called end cap spot clean. The reason I like this for headliners is because when you're dealing with headliner, you are generally dealing with this phenomenon called wicking. For those of you who don't know what wicking is, the easiest way to explain it is wicking happens when you clean the surface of a stain on a piece of fabric like headliner that's generally difficult to clean, but there's a lot more under the surface. It's like an iceberg, a lot more under the surface, a little bit exposed. And as the cleaned area dries, what was under the surface that did not get clean, the rest of it underneath got kind of stirred up by the chemical and it started to reach itself into the surface through something called capillary action. Before I went full-time as an entrepreneur in my business, I was actually a biochemistry major in college, so there's a much more scientific explanation to this, but basically, when you have liquid stir up a stain in something like fabric, it can actually start to reach up and kind of defy gravity in some ways and actually reach up and start to come to the surface. That's what wicking is, and when it dries, you see this ring effect. So I'm using NCAP Spot Clean because this is basically a tried and true headliner cleaner. It's really the only thing I would suggest for headliner cleaning. Now, it has been able to start to break down this area a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do when I'm cleaning headliner is just dry out the area after it's had some time to work. So I'm not introducing a brush or anything like that. Just taking my microfiber and I'm going to start wiping with a dry area just like this. Now, the reality is this is probably enough for this particular type of headliner that I'm cleaning because it's not in terrible condition. So I could, in theory, stop here. But for the sake of the video, a lot of guys will introduce a steamer or they'll introduce more chemical or more liquid. Let me show you guys a trick that I have learned after doing this for 10 years. I know many of you guys know what this tool is, but this is the Tornador Max. Basically, it's just the highest model of the Tornador. It's got a bunch of kind of like more durable components to it than the average Tornador. Now, if you guys have been following this channel for a while, I actually showed this tool on the channel literally like six years ago. So this is not a new tool, but I'm introducing it more and more nowadays because most people, in my opinion, do not implement this tool in a way that actually makes sense and it kind of extends the time of your detail. So I want to show you guys basically how I have modified the use of this tool to get the most out of it. When I am cleaning headliner and I've already pre-treated the area and I've agitated a, a little bit, I fill up the tornador with distilled water. Okay, it's not hot water. It's not hose water. I'm going to turn on the lever that allows me to spray out distilled water and air at the same time. And I'm going to quickly go over this area. Again, like I said, very quickly, light repeated applications, not a bunch of water spraying out that I just did just like this. Okay, I'm gonna stop there, take my towel, flip to a totally dry side, and I'm gonna start mopping it up just like this. Basically, I did very, very, very little application of the water. As soon as my microfiber towel gets a little too damp, okay, where I'm only able to use a damp side, no longer able to use a dry side, I'm switching to a totally new microfiber towel because one of the other reasons why wicking is allowed to happen is because when things dry slowly, again, that capillary action within the liquids, the chemicals inside of the headliner, starts to happen and underneath the surface starts to crawl forward to the front. So I can flip it to my non-liquid side with my Tornador after I've dried it and I can literally dry it a little bit just with air. Now I'm just gonna pan across the visor really quickly. 
You guys saw how fast that was. And you can see that discoloration that generally sits like right up here is gone. Now, on the inside, we still have this discoloration and ultimately, we still have it here on kind of this bottom area of the visor. You got this little black spot right there, some clear like stained areas there. I'm about to do the exact same process to this area as well. So remember, all I'm gonna do, shake up my chemical. I'm gonna spray the stains specifically. I might hold my hand behind here so I don't get a bunch of overspray on the windshield. I'm gonna spray this underside area of the visor because that tends to be what gets stained. Spray right here, all across. I can get it on the plastic, it's no big deal. Make sure this doesn't drip on me. And then I'm gonna spray this area here that is lined on the surface. And I'm gonna let that start to break it down. Again, this chemical is part of what is so key to this equation. As I let it sit, again, it doesn't take very long. I'm gonna start to agitate just like this, particularly underneath here where I know most of the discoloration is. Again, I'm gonna constantly flip to a dry side of my microfiber towel. Most people miss this in the beginning. I promise you, if you are using a damp side of your microfiber towel, get a new one. I'm gonna scrub this area. Then I'm gonna plug my tornador in. Remember, I'm gonna go to just the distilled water coming out. Then ignore the air compressor, recompressing the air. I'm gonna take a dry side of my microfiber and I'm gonna start scrubbing this and making sure that that water gets as dry as possible with my microfiber. When I am finished drying with my microfiber, this entire area, remember I'm coming back in with the Tornador, air only, and I'm gonna dry it with air as much as possible, just maybe 20 to 30 seconds of blow drying it with my Tornador. Then we're gonna come back in and check out what it looks like. <laughs> Now I'm gonna scan across the visor here for the after result. You guys can see that discoloration is gone. This little black stain is gone. This right here is actually a tear in the fiber underneath that uh, piece that was dirty there. And again, I'll just go back and forth one more time so you guys can see that discoloration is totally gone underneath the visor here, totally restored. Now, let's check out above here on the roof line. Right about here is where that kind of yellow-orange discoloration was. This was one single pass of the method that I just used, and you guys can see that's been restored as well. Now, really quickly, I wanted to explain this wicking phenomenon a little bit more so that you guys understand. Let's pretend like this is regular carpet or regular headliner, whatever. The reason wicking happens is because you have this stain right here that you and I can see, and that's what we end up trying to clean. What most people don't realize is that when you're dealing with fabric that has a spongy interface underneath is that when you get a stain, a certain percentage of this stain is gonna seep into the spongy material underneath and this is what you cannot see, okay? But this is still a part of the stain. Well, if you guys maybe took like a biology 101 class when you're in high school or college, one of the things you might have learned is that when you have liquids like this in a small enough, let's just call it container, and you pour that liquid in, you get this capillary action, which essentially is just the forces between the water or the chemical or whatever the liquid is and the container itself that it's in. But when you put that liquid against something like a fabric like this when it's inside, you get these adhesive properties when those adhesive properties overcome the cohesive properties, you get this liquid that basically starts to reach its way up and reach its way out into different parts of the fabric and it doesn't stay contained. And that's what happens when you see this wicking effect. When we try to clean this and we clean this surface level stain, we are introducing more liquid. That liquid and that cleaner is actually serving to stir up the dirt. The dirt gets stuck inside of the liquid. The liquid starts to grab onto material adjacent to it, above it, and as it dries, all that's underneath starts to actually come up, and it dries, maybe even creating a larger stain than there was in the first place because it's reached out. Now, the easy way to understand this is if I have a glass of water and I roll up a paper towel and I put half of the paper towel in the glass of water, just watch it and you'll see the water start to climb up the paper towel, and it's like defying gravity. That's actually what's happening in these moments as well. Now, guys, there's a couple things 
things I want to highlight here so that you do this well. Number one, I use the end cap spot clean from Release It. This doesn't need to be diluted. You can pour it straight into a tiny bottle just like this. Number two, I use a totally dry microfiber and I'll go through two or three if I have to in order to keep it dry. Do not use a wet microfiber towel. Number three, I use gloves and I failed to mention that. Make sure you use gloves because the oil's on your hand when you're touching, especially when the chemical is on the fabric. The chemical will literally pull the oils off your hand and put it onto the headliner and you'll just have to start from the get go. And then fourthly, I use the Tornador in this type of application as well as many others. I'm creating a playlist on the YouTube channel here to show all the applications that I use this tool because if you search this tool online, you're gonna see its application in a lot of ways that does not make sense for real world detailers who are like seeing cars on a daily basis in your shop as mobile guys. Using this in a lot of ways can just slow you down if you follow the way kind of mainstream people do it. So this is one of those areas where it actually makes sense to pull something like this out rather than a steamer because again, distilled water, cold water, minimal usage of liquid. It's why it makes sense in this type of application with the headline. So guys, look out for more videos on how I use this because it's going to be a reflection of how a professional could actually use this and how it makes sense for your world. Guys, if you got value out of this video, hit the subscribe button and make sure to hit the like button if you're a detailer or a hobbyist who got some value here because that's the only thing I know to look at to say, hey, this video actually worked for people. Hit the thumbs up button if it helped you. As always, the products and tools here are gonna be linked up in the YouTube description box below. And from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, keep working hard and I'll see you guys in the next video.